So let's get more insight now into Obama's spending plan. Joining me in the studio is Linda Yu. She's a fellow in economics at Oxford University. Good to see you again, Linda. So, I mean, really massive economic challenges ahead for President Barack Obama, ahead of these crucial midterm elections. Unemployment, really, his biggest obstacle right now. Very much so. There's 15 million Americans out of work, and more than half of them have been out of work now for more than six months. So that's really a long-term structural unemployment problem, and that's what the measures that he's announcing is intended to address. He knows that the unemployment problem in America is structural, so that means that they have to support new jobs in new sectors to create employment. And this is why today he's expected to announce an R&D tax credit to be made permanent. And this is intended to boost investment in the kind of high-tech areas of the future that he hopes will generate jobs. But of course, with midterm elections coming up, this is clearly why he's doing it now. But it also means that his uh, congressional opponents aren't necessarily going to support the measure. In fact, the Republicans Republicans almost certainly will not give the president a legislative victory ahead of these elections in November. And this, of course, is Obama has proposed spending, what, $50 billion on transport infrastructure. Is that going to do much to boost jobs growth, as we've been told? It is unlikely to do it very quickly. So in one sense, having a better infrastructure would be good again for the future. So this is what they're describing as a down payment on a 10-year plan to build things like, especially like the 4,000 miles of high-speed rail. So this is green technology. This is trying to develop the kind of infrastructure get, that can support America's economy as it upgrades for the future. Now, one thing he isn't going to do is to extend Bush's tax cuts for the the very wealthy. And that, I think, is a direct uh, uh, political stance, but it's also economically the right thing to do because the wealthy don't spend as much of a proportion as a proportion of their income. So they're unlikely, that's unlikely to have an immediate stimulus effect either. And I suppose that the really worrying thing right now for President Barack Obama is that he's not just facing opposition from the Republicans to his economic policy, he's got to deal with resistance from within his own party as well. Yes, that's right. Um, the Democrats uh, who are are standing for election as the entire House of Representatives, one third of the Senate. They're all distancing themselves from this stimulus package. In fact, on the road, they're not even calling it a stimulus. They're calling it a long term infrastructure project intended to support the future of America, when clearly this is a stimulus which is very small, but something which the U.S. economy absolutely needs because the other stimulus, which is monetary policy, at the moment has no effect. Interest rates are zero on quantitative easing is unlikely to be able to get America the kind of boost it needs when it's in a deflationary debt deleveraging scenario. So the prospects then for a further round of QE at this point? Uh, if the stimulus doesn't get passed and it looks as if joblessness will continue, then the Federal Reserve hasn't ruled out using more QE. But the question we have to ask is, if there's very weak demand because they're shedding debt, will QE, which is just buying more treasuries by the U.S. Fed, actually have any real impact? Japan's instance would suggest it wouldn't. Linda, thanks so much for putting that into perspective so nicely for us.